if you are not creating content or content is not part of your go-to-market strategy, then you're, you're literally taking opportunities, screwing them up and throwing them in the trash because content is everything right now. So my name's Martin and I run Jammy Digital, which is a content agency. I'm the co-founder along with my wife and we actually just create content for other businesses. So yeah, it's pretty much our bread and butter content. At Score App specifically has generated about 500 plus leads for me over the last year. I thought if I make one YouTube video, I'll be famous. Everyone thinks that, right? So I was like, I make a YouTube video, which is awful. And then I made a LinkedIn post, which is also awful. And I think I got in total, maybe six impressions. If you don't have the right kind of content, you're never going to get off that content treadmill. Some of you are creating content, but you've never told anybody really what you do and how to buy from you. Sometimes you can actually just create very specific content based on the goals that you have for your business. The more information that you can put out there in the world about your offer, about how you work with people, the less buyer's remorse people will have. When you think about communication, you think, oh, I just need to tell these people the thing. What's the thing that they need to know in order to make a buying decision? The reality is that there's no question that probably can't be answered online if you spend long enough searching for it. Mm. So we had to create content to repel certain people who weren't the right fit and content to attract people. People don't care what you say, they care what you publish. People don't care what you say on the call or over email, they care what you physically will publish because that means that you're committed to it. And before you know it, you start getting lots of traffic, you start getting more qualified leads and then the sales become far easier. We got on a sales call with that person and they ended up spending over £10,000 on a new website with us in 21 minutes, so doubling down on it. Uh, and that's when we started to think, you know, maybe we should stop building websites for clients and start writing content because it works so well for us. This is CEO of a, a multi-million uh, pound company in Europe. He said, I think it was your YouTube or something where you spoke very specifically about go-to-market strategy and it just seems so simple for the first time. <laughs> We want to work with you. That's the power of creating something that was for me, since I've learned much more from you guys over the year, that's just really specific. People are going to care about what you, what they can see online without you. What is it that these people want to hear? What do they need? And how can we deliver that? B2B salespeople are only spending 30% of their time actually selling and doing their jobs. If you get into more granularity to think about in that 30%, the activities that they're doing that convert directly to revenue is probably like 5%. <laughs> When you start to create content, you become a trusted voice and it becomes a real asset because when someone speaks to you, they see you differently, they respect you differently, mm -hmm. and you have to do less work in order to convince them that you're the right fit. I put everything out for the world to see. It's freely available and I charge for implementation. When you yeah. publish more content, you increase your authority and people feel compelled and more invested generally, which means that we have more control over the success of our clients. Before you get into your agenda, I just want to share some feedback. Once I watched your video, I was 95% sure that I want to work with you. Yeah. He said every single thing made sense. He said it was so clear. I knew exactly that I wanted to work with you. Almost every single time we make a considered purchase, so something where we, if we spend that money, we really have to make it do the thing that it needs to do. You don't need an awful lot of traffic. You don't need an awful lot of leads in order to make some sales, especially yeah. if you've got a higher price point. Sometimes it's better to start thinking about what mm. are the key questions that somebody might have before they buy from me but elevates your authority. It also makes you seem less needy for a sale, which a lot of your competitors, they will be that needy. And I've honestly had the fortune of working with some of the biggest companies in the world, like Microsoft supporting their campaigns, but that only came out of content, by the way, right? If you have a very strategic approach to content and your idea is I want to put out content every day, what kind of content, then that's when you need to really understand the algorithms. The problem is, is that usually people aren't putting out enough content to get realistic test results. What can I commit to? Do I want to be jumping ship every time the platform changes or do mm. I want to commit to text posts? Because let's face it, text posts work on every platform, even Instagram. My, my issue is that I have so many ideas in my head, so I want to put out a new idea all the time. And then everyone's just keep repurposing the content. Nobody saw it in the first place. I just said to myself, I just haven't learned the new ways of making it work on this platform. If I don't make this work, 
I'm terrible. That's how I felt after it. I'm like, this is so simple. A lot of work, but simple. One thing I recognized with organizations is that really massive fear of messing up. People were scared to make decisions, particularly when it goes into the tens of thousands of pounds or dollars. They don't do the necessary internal work to figure something out. They're just like, I'll wing it. But that changed a lot in 2022 because a lot of the decisions they made that were fast bit them in the butt. Realistically, you need to be putting out quite a bit of content. By producing mm. lots of content, we were able to get all of these people who are searching for problems, lead generation tools and quiz builders. We were using it to find out who our Cinderella clients are. And <laughs> it's really good because you can ask pretty probing questions. I started to introduce it to clients and say, hey, you've got a service-based business and a lot of people, it's really hard for someone to get a demo. What does the demo feel like? And, and it was a great way to provide proof of value upfront and help people to pre-qualify themselves to say, actually, we're doing quite well based on the data and statistics or, wow, I didn't realize it was this bad. <laughs> My whole business is geared toward this very specific thing. So it makes sense for us to engage. It really comes down to your goals. It's all about led from that goal. It's really important that you spend the time deciding what that is for the next few months. How do they start creating new customer journeys? How do they start to train and enable their team? What does their go-to-market technology stack look like? So just the full works. One of the highest revenue generating pieces of content we've ever created is why we're increasing the price of this service the reality is that if you get in now and you get this final space you can get this offer up until this date at this price you need to be talking about the really hard questions which is pricing which is about mm -hmm. people not getting access to this product so right now you should be thinking about i've only got one space left this year join the waitlist for 2025 and then then people are thinking, oh, wow, like this is legitimate. I would usually charge uh, an enterprise company 10K a day to run this mm -hmm. workshop. And it's like a, a gazillion percent less than that. Remember, it's all about communication. 